Hello and welcome to the opposite of my last video. Six things I love about my 2002 Toyota Celica T-Sport. Now number one is the engine. Now this engine, it's an underrated engine. Like, no one's really... It doesn't get the same kind of press as the equivalent engines from Honda, like the K20. But this engine kicks out about the same as the K20 while being 0.2 litres smaller. Lotus also thought it was that good that they decided to use it in their Exige and I think the US models of the Elise to um, get through the emissions uh, legislation that's over there. But the engine for this one is the 2ZZ GE and I love it to bits. It's got essentially the same kind of thing as VTEC on it. It's, six, it's 6,200 revs. It's about a 50 horsepower jump estimated. But instead of it being run by an electronic solenoid, it's run by oil pressure, which give or take, can make it more or less reliable. Um, more reliable because as Hondas are getting older, they're getting electrical issues, and one of the electrical issues is the solenoid. Um, they seize. So I've heard endless stories of people not getting their VTEC, and that's pretty much all they bought the car for. Uh, and they've got to replace the solenoid after hours of Googling. Um, but this is run by oil pressure, so it's perfectly reliable unless something goes wrong with the oil pump, in which case your engine's screwed anyway. But I love this engine. It revs all the way up to about eight and a quarter to eight and a half thousand revs, and it screams. It is a proper screamer, and it's not what I expected from this car when I bought it. I knew it had Toyota's equivalent of VTEC, which was lift. I call it lift. It's the change in the cam lift on the valves. Um, but yeah, I didn't expect it to be as lively. I think the word is lively. I'm going to go with that. I didn't expect it to be as lively as it is, but with that, the problem with it is because the higher power band is only between about 6.2 to 8.2, 8.5, it's a very small power band, so if you're blasting down a country road, Celica owners will know what I'm on about. It is a bit of a pig trying to keep it in that power band instead of dropping down a lower power band whenever you change up a gear. And to try and keep in that power band as you're decelerating, ready to shift up, you risk banging off the limiter pretty quickly and bending valves because the power band is so small. But either way, once you learn how to drive the car, like I have in two years, it is a screamer of an engine and I can't fail it for anything. The second thing I love about the Toyota Celica is the reliability. Now this car, in two years, the only Toyota parts on it that have broken have been the radiator, which is a common fault, bottom right hand corner tends to corrode and there goes your radiator, and the water pump, except the water pump hadn't actually failed, it was just sort of we changed it while we were there. So the only thing that actually broke that was Toyota was the radiator. The clutch died after about 80,000 miles, but to be honest I abused the crap at this car when I first got it because I was only 18. Um, so that was my own fault, I replaced that with an ACT. Killed that in eight months because it was a faulty unit. Replaced it with an ex a standard XZD clutch from Euro Car Parts, and it's been perfect. Nothing else Toyota has actually broken on this car. It's never spat out a plug. A coil pack's never failed. The ECU hasn't fried itself. Uh, the engine's perfectly reliable, and I'm sitting at when it comes up. I bought this car on sixty-seven thousand two hundred and one miles on April the twenty-sixth, two thousand and fourteen. Today, as I say that as I do this video, it is the 20th of May 2016, and I'm on 109,629 miles, and nothing has broken. Now, if that's not a testament to Toyota's reliability, I don't know what is. Um, obviously, it's had its maintenance, it's had plugs, um, iridium spark plugs from NGK, it's had regular oil changes every couple of thousand miles. It's had a new belt, it's had the air filter cleaned out regularly because it's a K&N filter, which means I don't need to replace it, I just wash it and re-oil it. Um, nothing else is actually broken. So yeah, definitely reliability is number two. To be honest, I think I should have given that number one spot, given the abuse I give this car. Number three. Now, given this car is 2002, the car was originally designed and built in 1999. That's when they started making them. And for a standard car, and it's not just me, there's a few other people that have agreed. Look at the seats. Like. Okay, fair enough. It's a coupe, you expect something like that. But to have other people complimenting me on the seats is awesome. They're asking me where I got them and I'm like, Toyota. 
and they don't believe me that they're standard, I have to show them pictures. There's been a number of people, even car friends, that know a lot about cars, and they've had to ask me where the seats come from. Because they do look quite buckety, and you can put harnesses through like I used to in the winter. Um, while they look buckety, they're not that supportive, but they are comfy. I've done hundreds and hundreds of miles in the space of day, a day, and they are really comfy seats. So definitely number three. Number four has got to be the handling. Now this has fully independent uh, suspension with McPherson struts with rear trailing arms. It's basically the same at the rear as a Civic EP3, which as you already know from Silica Vlog Episode 1 is what I originally wanted. So it handles like nothing. It's unbelievable. Um, oh, I'm getting a temperature warning on my camera because it's hot. Uh, so the door's getting opened. But yeah, definitely the handling. It grips like nothing. And it's got an open diff. It doesn't have a limited slip diff or anything. It's just a standard open diff, diff in the C63 transmission. Um, but it grips. I, I tend to find that there seems to be two limits to the car. It's like, as you cane it around a corner, it wants to let go. But if you put your foot down, there's now a higher limit. I don't know why that is. It might just be the, the tyres I've got. Um, but yeah, handling. Unbelievable. Number five has got to be the running cost of this car. Now, while fuel can be pretty bad, I mean, it's expensive as it is, but I think a lot of it will be down to my heavy right foot. Um, on a long run, I can get up to about 42, 43 miles a gallon. Given the car it's due, it does pretty well there. But the minute you go into the higher um, power band, your fuel's just gone it's smiles per gallon not miles per gallon but there are plenty of smiles so i suppose if i've got the money it's definitely worth it um tax on this is i pay monthly so it's 23 pound 18 a month or something like that um so i don't know what the full bill is but that seems to be pretty cheap um what else is there insurance insurance for me, is a bargain, given my age. I'm only 20 years old, I have two years no claims, I'll have three years in August uh, on the 29th. So given, in fact, I'm so young, this is a 1.8 kicking out 200 brake or whatever it is, um, my insurance is about £800, which I pay monthly again. So the tax insurance come out on the same date, so it's dealt with for the month. Um, but the insurance for me is an absolute bargain. When I insured this on the first year, my Lupo that I had was 12.50 for the year and I paid that all in one go but when I went to go and insure this I had to pay an extra £600 but then when that was dealt with the next year when I had a year's no claims it dropped right down to 13 and then this year's £800 and going by what I've seen on Go Compare and everything I'm scheduled to be on about £500 a year insurance next year well as of August 29th when it renews um, which for my age, I think is unreal because I know people paying two, three grand for a Civic, and I'm paying eight hundred pounds, which is another saving in my pocket compared to if I did manage to buy the EP3 that was going for like double the price. I would have paid double the price, and about what four times the insurance. No, not happening. So I'm happy with this big time. And to wrap up the six things I love about my 2002 Toyota Celica T Sport. I don't know. <laughs> I genuinely don't know. I mean, I didn't like the interior when I got it, but I love the interior now. I didn't like how it looked when I got it, but I love the exterior now. This engine, I'm happy with. I love it to bits. The reliability, perfect. And the handling, just as perfect. I'm struggling to find a sixth thing I love about this car. Probably the fact that it doesn't feel like it's going to let go anytime soon. It's on 110,000 miles, which some people will go, Oh, for a Toyota, you're just breaking it in. You're not just breaking it in. It's an old car. It's 14 years old and it's done over 100,000 miles. I mean, that's from, what, one end of Britain to the other and back. 50 times? That's a fucking lot of miles. That's not just breaking any car in. Um, but it doesn't feel like it wants to give up anytime soon. It doesn't feel like anything wants to go. Maybe it's just going to surprise me with it, but yeah, it it feels like it's still got more to give. 
and while this engine isn't very highly tuned it feels like if I did want to go down the boosted route or the any power route it could handle it and handle it reliably as well I could probably daily it like that but that's kind of my predictions it's hmm it's hard to tell until I've actually done it I suppose is what I'm trying to say which hopefully one day I'll have the money to do so yeah that is the six things I love about my 2002 Toyota Celica T-Sport. Thank you for watching, and I'm going to continue shooting today's vlog. Bye-bye.